son, we black. Appreciate you, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, I have a guest today, Josiah Newton. How you doing today, Josiah? I'm doing good. How about yourself? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Now, you are a amateur fighter. Yes, sir. When did you love? When did you fall in love with the fight game? Well, I started training around 11. I wanted to start earlier, but my dad wouldn't let me before I started. Um, he wanted me to go into the adult practice right out the gate. He didn't want me going out there and playing games in the kids class so i started when i was 11 but i truly fell in love with it probably around 14 and that's when i started to take it more seriously yes sir so when you started taking it more seriously at 14 what led to the decision to take it more seriously at that age well at 14 i was going into like my fourth maybe fifth fight and i was fighting a guy who was he was probably I do, I do remember. He was 49 years old at 14. Wait, you said 49 years. You were fighting a man at 49 at 14. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and whenever I was going in there to fight him, I was like, maybe I should kind of take this seriously and like <laughs> really put in some extra work. And that's when I started adding the extracurricular activities as in like your cardio, strength and conditioning, stuff like that. Um, and it paid dividends. I ended up finishing him early in the second round. Mm. of that kickboxing fight. So going into that fight, what was going through your mind when you knew you were fighting someone who had so many years of experience? Just pure excitement, man. My yeah. coach told me if I knock him out, then he'll give me my, my next rank. It was a purple belt at the time. I was I was just full-blown ready to get that next belt. So we went in there and we got the job done. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So what was the, the very next fight what fight stands out to you outside of the one that you were at 14 years old that you knew that the fight game was for you um i probably probably my east coast championship my first kickboxing like amateur fight that one was a pretty big deal i was i was 16 and i was going in there i went ahead and bumped up to the adult bracket i ended up fighting uh uh, this guy, I forget his name. Uh, he had a hard pr to pronounce name. Mm. And I finished. That one went to decision. That's the only fight that's went to decision um, on my amateur record. Uh, and I just, I loved it. It was, it was absolutely amazing. I loved all the lights, and it was, it was awesome. Mm -hmm. So, so, sixteen. That was that fight. You won your first championship. Yes, sir. When was the next time you won your next championship? Uh, I believe it was next year, mm -hmm. the year after that. Uh, but I was still 16, and I fought. It was like it was a three-man bracket, so the two guys fought, um, and it was actually one of my teammates. He fought in it, and he knocked the guy out in 30 seconds. Um, <laughs> so they're going out there and walking out against the guy who just knocked out yeah. the guy in 30 seconds. You're like, dang, man, that's that's pretty pretty tough yeah but we ended up getting the job done i believe in round two um i finished him uh with punches mm. so what's your fighting style um i like to keep it i like to keep it striking but if it goes to the ground we're ready um hobbs he's taught me everything i know and that's pretty diverse he he knows his stuff when it comes to the sport but i like to keep it standing i, I feel like the fans like it mm -hmm. more um and that's what it that's where it counts is your fans yes sir yes sir when did you first meet your your, your current team and how they uh helped you in your journey as a mixed martial artist i started out with my current team um so when i was 11 my coach went to my church uh i actually grew up with them my whole life and then uh my brother started before me bradley and uh from there i ended up joining a couple years later and just working out with them mm. I got you, I got you. So, how has your team um, inspired you to be better and um, just a connection? What is that connection with you and your team? It's just, I, I see what my coach has done. He's went and lived out of Jackson Wink um, for years, and uh, I, I just wanted to be like him, really. So, I, 
I pushed and I tried to. I kind of tried to copy his style. If, mm. you, if you go to our gym, you can kind of see I'm trying to take after him. Uh, and I just I saw he was doing extra stuff, so I started doing extra stuff. I looked around the room and I was like, well, he's the best and he's doing this, so maybe I should copy that. And I just try to follow in his footsteps the best I could. And it's, it's working out pretty good so far. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you say you met him at church. And we talked earlier before the interview started that you actually are a man of faith, that you're a believer. Yes, sir. How does uh, faith impact you as a man and as a fighter? I feel like it, it's in every aspect of your life. Um, and fighting, I feel like it gives you that extra thing to fight for. If you're just fighting to fight, I feel like I'm going to beat you because I have... I have something I'm fighting for. I'm pushing. I have a purpose while I'm in there. And I'm not going to let down my God, you know? So I'm going to go out there and I'm going to give it my all. Absolutely, absolutely. So you have a fight coming up. When is your fight and who is your opponent? I am fighting August 6th. Um, I'm fighting Samaj Portis for the BFC welterweight title. Mm. Um, I'm in the main event in my second MMA uh, fight. Mm-hmm. So, talk about your training, your training regimen, your training, and uh, some of the things that you are going over with your teammates in terms of preparing for this fight. Um, so, a lot of times, I wake up, I train at 6.30 in the morning, uh, I train for about an hour, then after that, I hit strength and conditioning and cardio, and then I rest, um, and then go to the gym back at, I'm back at the gym by uh, 6 Mm-hmm. And I got an hour of training, and then another hour of training, and then we normally hit 30 minutes of cardio after that. And then I go home. I do that pretty much every day throughout the week. Mm-hmm. Um, and then on Saturdays, I go up to Pitch Black uh, with Stephen Thompson, and I go there and I spar um, with those guys. They're, they're really good, and they give me good work. Absolutely, absolutely. So talk about the, the challenges that you faced um, being an amateur, you know, Fighting in a in a sport that you love, it, it takes time, it costs money. What has that process been like for you, knowing you want to become a professional, but at times, as you know, when you're when you're going for your dreams, it can be challenging at times. Yes. Um. Luckily, financially, I've been able to push. My parents literally help me every step of the way. Um. I do work a job. I work construction, but I'm at the point. To where I don't have the bills that some of these guys I'm facing. They're grown men. They have responsibilities. But I, I don't have bills, so I can take off work. I haven't worked in six weeks because mm-hmm. I want to focus. This is my career. I'm going to fight for a living. So I took off work. I've been able to train, recover like I need to be. Um, so financially, my parents helped me out a lot. Um, and what was the other part of that question? And, well, just in terms of how you, how you dealt with the, the challenges of being an amateur um just my coaches and my family really and they all support me through all them challenges yes sir so have you studied your opponent have you watched any tape what are your um thoughts on on him as a fighter and um i know you probably can't give too much detail into this but do you see like if you were to just explain like in a short detail of like you know his style and you know what you could see in in terms of potential holes in this game, if you can. I see he's he's a good wrestler. He's got good striking. He's he's pretty well rounded opponent. Mm. Um, I'm excited to put my skills. I don't feel he's fought someone at my level. Um, mm. So I'm excited to put him in deep water and see how he if he sinks or swims. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So has there ever been a fight where you were in there, and you felt like you had to give it your all. Has there ever been a fight where you felt like you were totally tested, or do you feel like, for the most part, you've had success in terms of just beating your opponent? Um, I have. I've had fights. Um, I've been fighting since I was 12. So, and a lot of times I was bigger than the kids, so they would put me against adults. So mm. yes, I have fought. I fought real tough opponents. Um, my world championship. Uh, down in Orlando, my only loss. That was a tough fight. So I've I've been pushed very hard, but luckily, um, it's against solid opponents. That have, um, so they should be pushing me. 
Absolutely. Yeah. That, talk about that loss in Orlando. What was that like? Who who did you fight against? And um, experiencing that loss, how did you overcome it? So I was 17 at the time. Mm -hmm. um, so I qualified to go in the novice uh, kids division. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really want to fight kids. So I went ahead and bumped up to the open men's bracket mm. where I was 2-0 and and 17 and I fought a guy who was 26 and 4 and he was 26. Mm. He's been training since he was 6. His dad owned a gym back in uh, he was overseas uh, and then he moved here and he trains with like the likes of Kamar Usman, Gilbert Burns, Robbie Lawler. So he was a real tough opponent. He pushed me really good. He ended up finishing me but that was that was a good fight and a good learning um, curve. Uh, so I feel like in an MMA rule set, I, I would be able to take that though. Mm. What did you learn about yourself in that fight, and how did you overcome that loss? Um, well, I just I knew my preparation. Um, I, I prepared the best I could. Uh, he was just a better man that night, um, mm. and that that's all right. It's okay to lose as long as you give it your all. Mm. I feel so. Obviously, you don't want to lose, no. <laughs> but if you give it your all, there's no, it's nothing to feel bad about because you pushed and you know you couldn't have done any better, and that's that's all you can ask for. Absolutely, absolutely. Who were some of the the fighters that you looked up to as a kid, and did you take any of their style? I know you talked about you took style from your coach, yeah. but was there anything that you saw from your? Who are your favorite fighters, and did you take anything from their style and add it to yours? I like. My coach, obviously, and he has kind of a similar style to Wonderboy Thompson. Mm. And I really like trying to copy both of them. They're they're real good. Um, I feel Wonderboy has the skills to go out there and beat anyone in the welterweight division. Um, and I, I want to follow in his footsteps. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Any? any? I like Dominic Cruz, but I'm a little I'm a little bigger than he is, so it's <laughs> harder to move like he does. Uh, but we try. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Top five UFC fighters of all time, in mm. your opinion. Mm. I'm going to have to go with John Jones, number one, mm -hmm. DSP, uh, Demetrius Johnson, Anderson Silva. Uh, Conor McGregor. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. I think Steve Miocic, Ooh. with what he's done Interesting. in the heavyweight division, I'd, I'd say he's... He's one of the best. You know, when he beat Daniel Cormier, they called him the greatest mm -hmm. of all time. But there's been a lot of great heavyweights that yeah. have come out. So that's interesting because Stipe, to me, is somebody who's unique in terms of he's just solid. He's yeah. just all, all, you know, all around great. Um, I like that. I like that top five. That's, yeah. that's a good top five. Okay, okay. So in terms of... If a kid came up to you and asked you, what does it take to be a fighter, mentally as well as physically, what would you tell someone, um, what are some of the tools to, to become a good fighter? I think you need to be a gym rat. You need to get obsessed. You need to be in there every day and just work your hardest and put everything you got into it if you're wanting to be successful. Mm, I got you, I got you. And what are some of the, the greatest uh, life lessons that that you've learned from from the people you train with, from your coaches, that you can use not only in the octagon, but in life. I just feel like the level of pressure that's put on you and the hard work you have to put in, uh, it helps you in any situation in life, as in like you got a hard business meeting or even an interview. I've went and fought for world titles, but you still get nervous coming mm -hmm. in here and doing interviews. So I think that that pressure helps you in whatever you're pursuing mm -hmm. in your life. Mm -hmm. And how do, how do you handle that pressure? Like when, as a fighter, how do you mentally, cause you know, like, especially like if you're in a fight and you get hit with one, especially, you yeah. know, like Mike Tyson said it, he said, everybody, everybody is great until, you know, they get with a punch that, that they're not prepared for. I'm paraphrasing, mind you. <laughs> but when you get hit with that punch that you didn't see coming, how do you 
prepare for that? Because how do you mentally take that in and come back and fight? Because if you think, oh my gosh, if you even even make an inch of 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 a decision of saying, I don't know if I can make it, you're gone. So within that quick second of getting that hit, how do you handle that pressure and maneuver of not letting yourself out of the moment and being present in that moment? I think it's all in your preparation. Um, if you're feeling that in the gym, that's that's a good thing. You need mm. to be put. You need to feel that in the gym, so it's not um, it's not a stranger to you in the in the ring. So you can go out there and you're you've been in these situations before because you've got all the best guys in the world back at your gym pushing you every day. You know, I feel like your preparation solely is what. That's where I get my confidence from. Mm. Is it? My team and my preparation. Your team and your preparation. Who are some of your teammates that are fighting um, August 6th? Um, I know Tristan is fighting, but who is Tristan fighting and who are some of your other teammates that are fighting? Tristan's fighting this guy named Aaron. Uh, I feel like that's a good matchup for Tristan. Tristan's a freaking beast. Yes. He's been working really hard. Um, I feel, and then Cody, he's fighting a guy from the guy I'm fighting. It's Jim. And uh, that's going to be a good fight. That's going to mm. be a good scrap. It's his, uh, Cody's second fight. And um, he'll be fighting a guy, I believe it's his seventh fight. So that's a good experience and learning curve. Good push for Cody. But Cody's a tough son of a gun. So mm. it's going to be exciting. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Where can the people find you on social media? And what are your expectations for this fight? Do you have any expectations for your fight in terms of how long it will last and all that? I want to finish them third round mm. um and we've been working on some stuff to do that i can't, I can't say <laughs> oh no no don't, don't say <laughs> that Neil, don't say it um maybe earlier whatever whatever he gives us uh, mm. we're ready to take it um and then the, you can find me on instagram and facebook at josiah newton mma uh those, those are the main two social media i use yes sir yes sir well thank you very much josiah for coming on the show today it's been a blast, man. It's been a pleasure. I appreciate it, man. Yes, sir. You're listening to The Sports Cycle on 105.1 Live.